Good evening. It's Friday night again. You know what's coming up. It's Barber's Arms, episode 38, the best barbering hairdressing chat show in recent decades. Lockdown 3, here we go on tonight's show. It's a booming one. Are we all ready? Here we go. We've got Cy and Gaz's uh, news desk coming up right after this intro. And then we've got our first guest on tonight, which is Edward Emmins, who's a director of Alan D Hairdressing and Education out of the Big Smoke in London. We're going to do our new quiz show, which is Rant or Rave, Spin the Wheel. This is a brand new addition to Barber's Arms. This is going to be a pilot tonight, and so we're really looking forward to that. Right about 8.45, we've got Gaza's Cocktail, and then we've got Nick Chirelli, who's going to be coming on uh, from uh, Adam and Eve Barbers in Ipswich as our local hero, and then me and Gaz will take it up to closing time. Action Pack Week on episode 38. We've done it. Over 5 million viewers have tuned in. Thank you very, very much. Welcome to Barber's Arms, episode 38. Please welcome Mr. Gary Machin. Well, thank you, sir. Nice to hear you. Nice to hear your voice again after your birthday weekend. How's everything gone with you? All good? Yeah, good. Busy. Uh, very busy day today. Um, I um, It's been one of those, uh, you know, like Zoom days today. Felt a bit normal yesterday. And I've just got to do a big shout out to Sheila Abraham from the Freelance Hair Association. Uh, Sheila invited me to do a seminar and she said, look, I'm going to try and get about 70 people involved. And she ended up, we get we got about, 100 and, I think, 116 people booked on. Gaz, even though it was virtual, on my screen, on my monitor, I could at any point I could see 30 people giving me the thumbs up. They were laughing at the jokes. Um, so I felt a little bit normal yesterday. I run over by an hour, which is like sometimes for me, I'm bang on time, but I was just enjoying it and I didn't want it to end. So Sheila, I know a lot of you and your members are watching tonight. So thank you for inviting me yesterday. I know we've got four more lined up for 2021 at Wall. Um, and so it was fantastic. Again, tonight's show is in association with the British Barbers Association and Wall UK, our two main sponsors. So yes, guys, I've had a, a really busy week. Uh, birthday was quiet, as everybody's birthdays are quiet. Um, and you did me on the eve of my birthday because I drunk uh, too much Malbec and too much beers. So I thought I'll try it again this week. I got a really nice bottle, bottles of Malbec from Gary and Jackie. Uh, uh, sorry, Gary and Ross. Uh, I mean, <laughs> Jackie and Ross. <laughs> Fucking hell, that's me out of drink. <laughs> um, so I got, I got some nice, so I'll try a little Malbec tonight. I've got some nice patrons and some Peronis. So looking forward. I'm lo really looking forward to having Ed Wood on as well as a, a, an old mate of mine, and I know you've known him for years as well, so I'm really looking forward to Edward being on, and I'm also looking forward to the Rantor Rave and our local hero. It sounds uh, like it's going to be a great, great evening. Yeah, well, I mean, Sheila, uh, the, the check's in the post for, thanks for laughing at his jokes, because, you know, he, he likes to get in front of a crowd and have a bit of love, so, you know, don't let him know uh, I, I've, I've sent that through to him. We we sorted it out in the end. We, we made him feel good, didn't we, in the end? Anyway, going on from that, um, thanks ever so much last week for our guests, Mr. Frank Gambuza and Sam from the Hairdress Hairdressers Charity. It was a great show. thought it was really, uh, really good show from a, a, an information point of view. You know what was going on in North America and Sam as well. Lovely, lovely lady doing a great job there with the charity. Uh, usual, all our viewers that make this show what it is, um, as you've just said, lockdown three, we're day 23 in our lockdown in England. Uh, last week's numbers, we're just hitting 90,000. So thank you all so much for, for following us and the shares and the likes and everything else. We're just hitting 5.3 million overall views. I mean, unbelievable. Thank you so much. Um, just quick one. Um, thanks for... Um, Everybody tuning in, and I know everybody's had a hard time this week. I don't know about you in your part of the world, Sam, but we've had to put up with Storm Christoph. So we've got a lot of people. We've got a lot of floods locally, and then for top it off, not last night, night before, we had about five inches of snow as well. So everybody's well blessed at the moment in, in our area. We So my heart goes out to everybody who's been flooded. Northwich has been an absolute washout near us. Uh, so anybody who's in that neck of the woods, you know, anything we can do, you know, just let us know because it's just an absolute terrible situation to be in. Not only a pandemic, but actually before well, the 
Right. It's just on top of it, isn't it? You know, there's a few girls on the uh, seminar yesterday, I think from Manchester, Didsbury area that, you know, they've been just, they've just missed it. But I think there was so many people in that area, 2000 people that have been evacuated, had to go like living. I just think with COVID and everything, it's just like, can we take any more? Come on, please just try and give us some lightness. I mean, going on to the new stuff, I, I can see the vaccinations are going up. Uh, I think I listened to some of Boris had said, saying, look, you know, we're still on schedule for the next announcement to be on 15th. I, I just read it into it, everybody, that we're still on schedule for 15th for next announcement. Don't think we're going to be back. I still think it's going to be Easter, probably after Easter. So bear that in mind on your preparation. Don't let's manage people's expectations. Luckily, you've all been here before. So just just be patient and just do the right thing still. And uh, let's protect the NHS as much as possible because, you know, it's still uh, rife out there. Guys, before yeah. you go on to any more news, um, Ken Lee's son came in from school the other day and he said to me, he said, I've got to go back tomorrow and I've got to say to the teacher, she was asking me to find out the difference between theory and reality. <laughs> um, so I, I said, uh, well, what are you asking me for? I, I struggle with that. I said, go and ask your mum if she'll sleep with plumber for a million quid. So he came back and she said, yeah, mum says she'll sleep with plumber for a million quid. I went, there you go then. He went, I still, I said, well, go and ask your sister if she'll sleep with plumber for a million quid. Come back, he says, yeah, my sister will sleep with plumber for a million quid. I says, there you go then. In theory, we sat on two million quid. In reality, we're living with a couple of slappers. <laughs> but hopefully that helped him out at school. I, I don't know if I'm supposed to be laughing at that or telling you off for that, really, but I, I'll, I'm going to laugh and give you the benefit of the doubt. Moving on to the news desk from that piece of information from school. Um, as you've just said, we, it doesn't look like we're going back anytime soon with, with the news that we've had. Um, we get, uh, I think we get re-evaluated on the 15th of Feb, isn't it? But we won't be going back. And I think he said schools are going to have two weeks notice anyway. So we, we're getting to the point of no return for that. Um, looks like, like you say, Easter. We've had some news from Wales. They, they've been re-evaluated on the 29th of Jan. Looks like they're going to get no restrictions lifted. Scotland, mid-Feb. Uh, again, I don't think they're going to be lifted then either. That's the news that we're getting from Parliament. And Northern Ireland, unfortunately, have just gone into another six weeks. So they are now March the 5th. So, you know, it's... Um, I feel for for everybody, and but at least at least we're getting some numbers this time. At least they're not just keeping us in the dark, um, you know. And it, we're manage, managing what what we're thinking and and how the situation is. We can see, but we've been here before. We can see what the numbers are like, so we know we, you know we're not daft. We're not going to go any back anytime soon. By the looks of it, um, can I just give a shout out to somebody as well who I've been talking to and. I watch her on when she does all the podcasts and everything. There's a, a young lady called Colette Osborne, uh, Salon Owners United. She's doing a fantastic job. And I thought I'd give her a shout out because we have a lot of negative uh, news desk material, if you like. But this young lady, she tries her best and she puts all the information she possibly gets. In, you know, she's done a huge amount in um, employment law. She did one the other day. She had a couple of lawyers on. Uh, she's done a huge amount of work with insurance and trying to keep everybody. So, Colette, fantastic job. Thank you very much. I'm following you, your work very closely. And it's really, from an employee's point of view, it's really great. On the insurance side, uh, can I just say, he doesn't look like he's giving an easy fix, even though they said there was going to be payouts. A lot of, I, I was talking to Joth, actually. Uh, uh, when was it? I think it was beginning of the week. We're, we're both using the same insurer. Uh, and I was talking to Joth, and I don't think we're going to have an easy fix to this at all. I know some people have been uh, paid out, but I think most of us are going to have to fight for everything we get. So keep plugging away. Make sure you get your all your claims in. Um, and also, something to, to, to just keep in mind, make sure if you are a salon owner or if you have got tools in, in at work, make sure you keep going back and checking your, your premises periodically. If it's left empty and you cannot prove that you've been back and checked it, you're, in some circumstances, your insurance is void. So just be careful with that. Make sure you keep going back and checking your premises. Also, you know, running the taps, you know, legionnaire disease, everything else, checking we've had this frosty weather. 
So just keep an eye on your premises. It's not easy, I know, but it's something that we have to keep going back and doing. And you have to prove it if anything does come of a claim as well. So make sure you keep a log or if you've got CCTV, that's already done. But uh, we've had a, a young lady who was on Colette's uh, show. She'd had uh, put a claim in because she'd had a, a flood damage or from a, a flood above the, the shop. And because she was empty, um, her, her actual insurance was void, which I thought was absolutely a kick in the ball. So just be careful uh, and just make sure that you check your premises and keep an eye on things. Uh, that's the news desk for this week. If we have any more information, we'll get it you throughout the show. Right, just be time for a drink, mate. Anyway, what we're yeah, doing. just while we're getting his drinks as well, welcome to some of our top fans as well. Uh, Matt Walters, Ross Miller, Alison Russo, Ross Carter, Nikos uh, Vagabonds. Uh, Sheila's joining us. Sheila Abrahams, as I mentioned earlier. Sheila, thank you again if you've just joined us for the uh, seminar that we hosted for you guys yesterday. So. Um, really good. I've, I've been giving you a nice big build up there well, before, Amber. It's nice to have you joining us on Barber's Arms uh, for the first time. So, uh, yes, I, what you were drinking anyway, guys, what, what you watch Tipple to start with? Well, I'm stuck with Oak Favourite. I'm on Newcastle Brown still. So, and I've, do you know what? I, I, I haven't got my Barber's Arms glass. I'm drinking, I'm being a heathen and drinking it out of the bottle. Um, we've got, I've got mine, cup, right? Which is a bit of a hum. I'll go get mine. I'll try, I'll, I'll look for it. Barmaid hasn't set up properly tonight to me. Uh, she disappeared upstairs somewhere. I don't know where she is. Um, but we've got a, a great cocktail tonight because we've got a bit of a, a Scottish homage tonight because uh, it's Burns night in a couple of days. This weekend is Burns weekend. So there'll be a lot of Scots up and down the country, absolutely slaughtered, wearing the kilts. And I don't know if you've been watching the production when we were in the pre-production earlier on. We've got Mr. Ross Miller on as well, our Scottish connection. So hopefully he's going to be wearing his kilt. If he doesn't, I'm going to get one on. So we've got we've got Ross on towards the end of the show. He's going to make a cameo appearance. He's going to tell us what's happening in Scotland and Doncaster. And he's going to give us a few tips on how to bring Burns Night in as well. So we've got a, a packed show tonight for you, folks. It's looking good. Sounds good. I'm looking forward to the uh, kilt. I've only ever wore a kilt once. Um, but I think I just haven't got the legs for a kilt. Don't know why. Have, uh, have you seen uh, Ross in a kilt? Too many times, if you want to be honest with you. I don't want to go into it because sometimes, um, you know, he has lifted it up a few times. So I have to just be careful on my like memory. Uh, mem memory blocks and stuff but I look forward to seeing that tonight I do worry about men who wear skirts indoors so all you Scottish uh, guys out there uh, if you want to post some photographs hopefully we might be able to get them up uh, on, on next week's show or if you, you know, want to post them onto the group tonight you can do as well do you know what though do you know what I, I whenever I think of a bloke in a kilt other than Ross because he looks fantastic he looks majestic in a kilt because he's a big fella and uh, I always what you always want to know if, if they, what they actually wear underneath it don't you you know what I mean it's, have you ever seen have you ever seen carry on up the Kyber? yeah yeah <laughs> when, when they all lift explain the kilt. to everybody to our younger viewers what a Kyber is <laughs> Well, Carry On Up the Kyber is it was a group of films, uh, comedy films in the 70s and 80s, well, late 70s, eight, early 80s. And um, it's a, they, they're a portrayal or they take a situation. So there's Carry On Up the Kyber, Carry On at Your Convenience, Carry On Doctor, Carry On in the Army. They take all these mundane things and the Carry On Up the Kyber is a set of people. I mean, most of them are probably dead now. We're showing her age now. I think Barbara Wins has just died, hasn't she? She's. Uh, she was one of the most famous ones to, to last out. But it's about a group of soldiers that are, that are, are in Afghanistan or, or somewhere like that. They're just on the, it's the Khyber Pass. So the Khyber Pass is a deep ravine and they're guarding the Khyber Pass. And they're, so they're fighting the locals in a, in a kind of tutorial sort of way. And um, one of them gets knocked out and he's wearing pants underneath his, his kilt. So they all they all scared of him because they think they let, let the tackle go free, but he, in the end he, he comes good. So if anybody wants a good giggle and a little watch, and he, it's a satorial look at the empire, watch that. It's absolutely funny, really really funny. But that's the only thing I think about when I think of kilts when when I when I hear a kilt. <laughs> 
Oh, anyway, uh, I, well, Mr. Hemmings is due. I've, uh, I've due, I haven't actually got my glass. I've, I've lost it somewhere. But I'm just going to have a quick short as well because today I've had uh, a day of... Uh, it's, Rachel, we, we've done absolutely nothing. I know you've been quite busy. Uh, you've had mm. um, some meetings and everything, but I got up this morning and I got ev- I got a whole day planned. Of, other than paperwork, obviously, production notes and um, we, we you know drawing up lists and doing some work for the online platform that's coming, which is exciting. But I've done. I haven't actually been out of the house at all today. It's the first time, you know, other than. Walking the dog. I haven't. I haven't actually been, been out of the house at all. So it's uh, it's been a bit of a funny day today. So, and I'm planning on doing nothing tomorrow as well. So, I'm just I'm just finishing off that last of that uh, licorice sambuca. So I just need to empty the bottle. So, good. Oh, answer. it sounds dangerous when he says that he's not going out tomorrow. That's a license to kill tonight. Is that he knows he's going to get messy and he's going to write tomorrow off. Just to clear everybody up as well. When Gary says he's doing paperwork. That means he's emptying his safe and taking it all out, ironing all the 50s, putting them in neat piles and putting it back. Don't be mistaken by anybody that's doing any kind of mathematics spreadsheets or looking at his business. He's just counting his door in one of his many safers. Is that right? You, you are such a tit, you are. That's you, not me. <laughs> um, Gaz, tonight, before we get everyone as well, we've got the, uh, the the new quiz show again. It's an introduction into Barber's Arms as well, which is... Uh, uh, rant or rave topic that will come up then we're going to ask our guests to have a, a two minute rant or a rave about the topic that's actually up on the screen looking forward to this one yeah definitely I mean this is brand new for them brand new for us as well um, I think it's great from a, a viewer's point of view it, there's some funny some funny um, topics in there so I'll, I'll be, <laughs> it'll be it'll be funny to see what comes up tonight and how it goes uh, obviously, we can't see what's going on because it's it's almost like spin the wheel. So it's a random pick, uh, and and the actual guest can't see what it is. So we're actually giving giving the what, what, but the the viewers out there. Well, anyway, I, think just, I think we've just got our noisy uh, our noisy guest has just uh, and we've we've obviously spoke before tonight to get colour coordinated on our outfits. It looks like he's in a spaceship and he's moving around. It looks like he's very got a cool bar there. Oh, 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 good evening. Well, first of all, welcome to Barber's Arms, episode 38. The one and only Mr. Edward Emmings, director of Alan D. Addressing and Education from London. Edward, welcome. Good evening. How are you doing? Absolutely average. How are you? <laughs> to be honest with you, after listening to your headline news, I feel average. I feel less than average. I was happy before I came on. I've never been so miserable. <laughs> <laughs> How are we, Edward? Anyway, everything good with you? How's lockdown suiting you? Listen, it is what it is, isn't it? We've uh, we've got to make the most of what we can. We've got to try and educate if we can. We've got to try and stay focused. I'm trying to get dressed, or at least the top half every day. Um... <laughs> is that is that your Zoom suit? That one. Is that a pull Completely. On? That a pull? I'm, I, yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm sitting here in pants underneath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, me and Gaz. No, oh, I, I, I like the shirt. <laughs> oh, Gazers. <laughs> yeah, look, you're very smart, you two, tonight. Oh, well, thank you. We've, you, got you, Prime, you we've, we've got Primark online up here, so we, we, we spoil ourselves every Friday night with a new outfit or uh, something like that. So, yeah, it's good. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think that if you were standing behind us, Edward. I tell you, it's, uh, we don't, we wear very little, only, only just a shirt. So it's uh, as, as everybody does in this Zoom land now. It's a really strange one. I was speaking to a mate of mine the other day. He's a he's a uh, barrister, and um, he was showing a photograph. He's wearing a suit and shirt and tie, and he's got his cufflinks and he's looking rock and roll. And then he put the camera down, and he's sitting there in his tracksuit bottoms. It's just great. <laughs> <laughs> you can't actually, uh, you can't write it, can you, at the moment? Uh, just get on, just giving our, our viewers, some of them who might not know you, I can't believe there's not anybody in the, in the country that doesn't know you within the industry because you've been around a long time, you're very respected, you've done, uh, you've done a lot of things. Just give the guys out there uh, just a snapshot of who you are, what you are and what you stand for, really. 
Okay, thanks, Gary. Uh, my name's Edward Hemmings, as you've said, from Alan D. Hairdressing Education. Uh, we have two schools, one in London, the City of London, and one uh, up in the east of England in Suffolk. Um, I'm a hairdresser, a barber, a men's hairdresser as well, always, always done both. And um, really, uh, the main part of our business now is education. So it, it's from new um, into the industry. It's uh, refreshers. It's hairdresser to barber, barber to hairdresser. Really anything to do with education. And, and personally, I teach presentation skills. I teach young, new hairdressers how to present themselves, how to get up on stage, how the confidence to do what you guys do so well. Brilliant. So from where you're based, you've gone away from the salon side of things now, because I know you used to have, I mean, I know it's a family business. You've been, you've been in the family business for a long time. So you've gone away from the salon side of things too much and gone full head into the hairdressing and barber training, the academy side of things then. Yeah, the, it, we change. I think we closed our last actual standalone salon now probably four years ago and went Head, heading completely into education but I actually have in, we've, we've got big premises in London so I have hairdressers that, that rent space and I still have one two days a week I still I still work which is which is great I mean I love it it's, it makes the, the working week more exciting and I also feel it's great for our students to see real hairdressers working because it, it's a focus on how you know you are going to be you know you, you can project yourself you can see what your future holds it's so important to see it actually happening i think guys growing up coming into london from yorkshire when we first started with fellowship um i think me and edward are, are a similar age you're a bit older guys but um when we started um going into <laughs> london I, I used to stay down in kens well just off kensington road on gloucester road and i always remember going into gloucester tube station there was an Allen D salon across in that area. And you used to see him up and down in London. You used to see him in central London. And I'll uh, never forget, I said this to Edward. I forget what the organisation was, but it's where all salons got together. I'd have been about 23, 24. And Bill uh, had asked me to go on this um, gathering together where salons all got together. It was in Birmingham. It was go well there. And I remember this guy coming into the, to the room and it was all about businesses and stuff. And he, he got a fantastic tan, he got grey hair, he was immaculate, he, he, he pulled up in a Rolls Royce and I was just in awe for the three days I was there, just following this guy. And it was actually uh, Alan, Ed, Edward's dad. And um, it, I've always then had so much respect for these guys and we, me and Edward's been mates for years, but that was one of the first times I looked at Edison and thought, wow, this is not just about cutting hair. This is, if you do it right, this is a business where you can, you know, have a, a fantastic lifestyle from it. And, you know, them early memories of your dad walking in that time, your mum and everything, it would just, uh, you know, it did captivate me straight away by looking at that. Let's hope it was my mum. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure your dad will be messaging me in the next two minutes saying, you're off the Christmas card list. <laughs> um, <laughs> off you get. Um, Edward, on Barber's Arms, we, 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 we have our guests to, we're going to go through different kind of questions. There's some fun stuff and then there's some, you know, kind of questions that we, we hope that our audience uh, would, would it, we try and do it as if they were sat interviewing you as yourself. Now, I know through lockdown, through Alan D, uh, Instagram Live TVs, you've done lots of interviews. I know I've been uh, on, in the first lockdown, we, we were interviewed together. Does it feel a bit weird sat at the other side being interviewed? It is a strange thing because I, I'm resisting the urge to take over and I'm resisting the urge to ask you guys so, so many questions that I want to ask. So, uh, you know, there'll be a, a, a rhetorical time over the next few weeks because Mr. Doom and Gloom down there in the blue shirt told us we're going to be in this for the next couple of months. So, yeah, it does feel strange. Um, it, it does feel really strange where I'm just kind of holding back, waiting for those questions. Well, here we go. Let's start off with the first question then. First question we want to ask you is, um, and it's a biggie really, but what is the most, uh, or what's been the most single moment of your career that you would say, you know, looking back at my time here, that's been the biggest highlight so far of my career. One part of your career that you look back and you think, I want to be sat there again for that hour and a half, two hours. What's the biggest single moment of your career that you say, that's been the best part of it so far? 
I'm go I'll go right the way back. I have to tell you, every every day, every month, every week, every year, there's different highs, different things that mean so much. But I think the first time back in 95, we landed in Thailand and it was the first big, big show we did in a theatre. And there's about 500 people in the theatre. I was nervous beyond. And, and I actually wrote my presentation skills workshop based on that day, how I felt. But at the end of the show, when we finished and the lights went up and all the girls rushed to the front of the stage and tried to grab your trousers and, and, and you kind of think, wow, I'm a hairdresser, but I'll have a bit of this. And I think that point, I'll never forget that point, how that high, how good it felt. To be honest, it's been downhill since then for the last 30 years. <laughs> Gaz gets that all the time. He's, you should see him in America, he's going float. It's like one at a time, one at a time, stand back. <laughs> He, he does tell some rubbish uh, sometimes, Eddie. Yeah. I, I, I'm just taking a notice of him. Just, just from my point of view, um, and that's the highlight, you know, that's one of the defining moments for you as well. Uh, I mean, there must be a lot of proud moments. I mean, how big the, 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 the business is, how far you've come. You know, there's been ups and downs. Um, what's, your, what's, your, what's your true or, or your worst regret? What would you do differently if, if you actually ever, ever... When could go back? I know we can't live in the past. I know we can't go back and change things. We can't can't do anything like that. But what would you change if you could give somebody that bit of information? You talk to yourself way back then. What would it be? I, in all honesty, I, I don't regret any particular moment. I think perhaps taking time, not rushing certain things, perfecting my skill. I've never. I always struggle to be a great hairdresser and a great barber. I'm, I'm okay. I'm always honest about that. Simon knows that. I'm very honest about my skill. I, I think going back, I'd like to have taken more time to perfect those skills. Listen, it hasn't stopped me doing what I do, but I, I think there's certain skills I'd really like to say to myself, I, you should have taken more time. Um, a, a single event, and, and I remember I knew Simon at this time. I used to do a bit of television and I wore a new jumper that I thought looked really cool. Not only did I never do television again, Julie Bellinger didn't speak to me. That was my PR for the, le for the next six years. <laughs> so would you say then, because one of my um, questions would be similar to Gaz's there, but the next question, what's, what's like the biggest lesson that you've learned in your journey? The one thing you can say that, do you know what? That's the biggest thing I've learned and that's something I'll, I'll stay away from or that's something I continue to do. What's the biggest single lesson that you've learned while you've been in this business? The single biggest lesson, and it's taken us a long time uh, to learn, do what you're bloody good at doing and find someone better to do what you're not good at doing. I, I, we, you know, in, in a family business, and we are a small business, my dad celebrated 60 years last year. You tend to try and do everything. You mm. tend to, I'm going to do this. The, the fact is, you can't do everything brilliantly. So you've got to find what you do well and find those better to do the things that you can't do. And I think that's going to be the success story of Alan D moving forward. We've got my team are off the scale and it wouldn't I couldn't do the things that I do without knowing that back in the academy, they are having it off because they're that good at what they do. And, and that's really important. You know, I can't do everything. I can't teach. I can't do lessons. I can't show people how to cut hair, how to barber hair. I need better people to do it. And that, that genuinely is the single biggest lesson. Do you know, do you know what? I, th I think that's a, a really good piece of information or a, a piece of advice for a lot of people out there. It's probably, I could take it, you know, take, it, take some from that because you literally can't be everywhere. And that shows with how you've di diversified with your business because you've gone up to Ipswich, haven't you, up in Suffolk there. <laughs> Uh, and obviously you can't yeah. be up there all the time. You can't be in London all the time. So you have got to delegate. But um, from, from a, a point of view of, of the business, what's, what's affecting the business? How do you think education has gone? And what's affected your business singularly most? Other than the pandemic, we don't want to get onto that because you know, everybody's talking about that anyway. But what, what's the one thing that's probably affected your business most? How, you know, why did you feel like you've got to diversify? That's a great point. The internet and the size of the internet rather than the high street, the yellow pages has been the biggest, the biggest change in the industry and certainly in education. If you go online, everyone is the greatest educator, has the greatest school, has the most models, has the best models, has the best outcomes. 
outcomes. And, and so the, the internet has allowed everyone to become a master. And I think for a heritage business like ours, we kind of, we, we sort of, in a, in a funny way, turned our back on the internet. Go, no, you know, we, we, we're great at what we do and we don't need the internet. And it's incredible. Uh, now mixing both together, making sure we're out there at the top of Google, we're out there at least on the first page allows people to see us. So understanding that the internet is the high street nowadays, particularly for the last year because of what's gone on, but even before that, and understanding that actually once you're there on this new high street, you've then got to be bloody good at what you do when people do find you. And I think that's been the biggest, um, that's been the biggest lesson for us. We've, we've, we've got to be up there electronically while still maintaining how good we are when we actually meet face to face. That, that's, that's a big thing. And I, and I think Gaz, that's been one thing that I, I've, I've got to look back in from the 23rd of March, 2020, one of the things I have got a big team, strong team, you know, especially in the marketing and, and uh, social media side at Wall. But a lot of stuff I've had to learn and do it myself because they're not there. You're at home and you've got to, you can't just be like pulling off. But one thing you said there is I've had that from an early age. Asking for help or surrounding yourself with the best people is a sign of strength, not of weakness. Absolutely. When you're asking for help, when you get somebody in better at doing something. So look at Michael Damiano, Five, Carl Blake. Sam Campagna, Andrew Raven, the better at what they do than I am. But all I have to do is lead them and sprinkle magic on them from time to time. That's all I do. Yeah. It and, does I'm it. and you don't have the stress of trying to cut hair when you're leading them. So your best thing, when you come out on stage, you electrify that audience because that's your focus. It's, and it, it's a, just a beautiful thing when it all works together like that. Well, they'll always say to you as well, it's like you guys, when I watch Gary educate, it's that good at educate, especially shaving. It's like a professor of it. Is that he needs, it's the other people around him, but there's no one better at it than him. So he's even been down a wall and taught my guys stuff because that's the, the, the main focus. But if we're asking guys to do like PowerPoint presentations and the organization, it wouldn't be where he is. But there's nobody can do what he does on them stages, live in, in front. Because to, to, to educate shaving in a classroom, I'm not saying it's easy. There's only a few of us that can do it well. But to educate shaving on a live stage at an exhibition takes a different level of patience, professionalism, and expertise. And when he does that, he's it, it, got all of that in, and it, it just works a treat. Edward. Oh, you're, make, you're making me blush here now, I tell you. Well, we've got some more stuff that's going to make you blush in a minute, so just hang on to that thought <laughs> while we're at it before you start. Edward, <laughs> name me two things that you still, two big things that you still want to achieve in your career. What's the two things in a, in a bucket list in your mind? Because I've got a couple of things I still want to achieve, but what's the two main things moving forward that you still want to achieve? I want to win a bloody award for something. I tell you, 30 years to be an overnight success and not a bloody award. I'll, anything, I'll honestly, I'll take anything. Um, so I'd, li I'd like to win an award for something. Um, and, and secondly, I'd like to expand the business. I I'd like to see us um, co connected with either college training, so our name, or that we expand our academies um, throughout the, the country that would be an absolute dream because i think we've got something really important to offer brilliant uh, just before we go on simon i've just had a word off uh, production team we're just going to go into our first ever rant or rave today so can i just explain what we're going to do with you tonight <laughs> edward so absolutely you what's you drinking soon? anyway what are you drinking oh, I've, i'm drinking a, a chianti classico Oh, beautiful. I'm on a Santa Florentina Malbec. Very nice. Thanks, Ross. Nice. Thanks, Jackie. I, I'm on a Newcastle Brown ale. Very, very nice. If I had that, Gary, I'd need hospital treatment at the end. And Simon, if I drank three glasses of Malbec, I'd be asleep. Well, you see, it's up to you two to keep me both awake. So come on, you need to try harder. <laughs> the thing is, you see, I've got a, such a gentle palate. I, I can only take the Newcastle Brown, you see. <laughs> anyway, 
just just going on from this, we, we're just going to go on to our, our uh, first ever rant or rave. This is going to be a two-minute rant or a two-minute <laughs> rave about a particular subject that we're going to give you. Now, it's random, so it could be anything from football, music, millennials, government, Brexit. It could be literally anything. Okay? This could be the end of my career. Exactly. So it could be the end of ours as well if this goes wrong. So Keep it anyway. clean. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm going to say to Trevor, you can't actually see this, but we've got a, a spin, a, spin, a roulette wheel, if you like, for, for picking this particular subject. You'll hear it, but we won't know until it spins up and actually tells us. The viewers at home can see this. So I think my wife's watching. Oh, that's all right. You'll be fine. And anyway, all you got to do is rant or rave about it. Whatever it is, just two minutes. Say whatever you know about this particular subject. So, production, can we spin that wheel? So, so the viewers can see the wheel spinning, they can hear it, they can hear it. So we're batting in the dark here. So he's going to flash it up as soon as we know. Hey. Oh, I've just seen it. <laughs> so can you give us a rant or rave for two minutes on the subject of aliens? Okay, aliens. Aliens. If they came down to Earth right now, this is ridiculous. If they came to Earth right now, what would they see? They'd see... <laughs> <laughs> they'd see some very strange people walking around the same block they live in every single day of the week. They would see the same people getting into their cars every day of the week. They see these same people wandering around the block with these brand new dogs that they didn't have before this bloody lockdown, picking up the same shit that they leave outside my door every single bloody day. <laughs> Is this the sort of thing we're talking here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. keep going, Whatever keep going. You You've got another minute to go, keep going. They would wonder what on earth is going on. The fact that it's taken us nearly a year to close the bloody borders to a disease that keeps coming in. They would surely not act with complete surprise that when we sent, uh, sent four million kids back to school, that a bloody disease spread. Have they ever seen children on a school bus in the morning? They're all over each other. They must be looking at us like we're stark, raving mad. And then they look at a show like this, four middle-aged tarts sitting there shouting at each other and giggling at each other and patting each other on the back. <laughs> now, aliens, love aliens. They've got to be out there somewhere. Come and talk to us. Help us out. Let's get us out of this situation. We've got more chance of seeing aliens over the next two months and going back to bloody work. End of story. You know, cheers. You, well you know. done. Excellent job. Do you know what? You've just managed to turn the subject of aliens into a party political broadcast. Absolutely fantastic. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you what, for future guests, and you know who you are, the next three or four weeks, you're all piled up there as guests on Barber's Arms. That's going to be a tough act to follow. Because that was a, when Brilliant. I saw that pop up on my monitor, I'm like, that's going to be a tough uh, thing. But Edward, you did really good there. And I've got to tell to everybody at home, the, none of our guests will know and until that comes up on your screen. No one will know. Talking about screens as well, don't forget to follow us on our Insta, which is Sammy Show Wall. Gaz is the British Barber. We've got Barbers underscore arms. Edward's Instagram and Alan D's Instagram and their website will also be popping up on your screens as well throughout the show. So if you want to follow Edward and see what's happening with Edward in his Instagram and his Instagram interviews, then you can do so. Again, thank you. As Gad said at the top of the show, 5.3 million views since we started episode one back in April last year. So this is, makes it the best, most viewed hairdressing barbering chat show in recent decades, if at all. At all. So thank you very much for everybody who's following us. Edward, before we move on to the quick fire questions, I've got one more serious kind of question to ask you. Um, who's been the most constant motivational character uh, or most motivational person or, or a constant uh, push to you in your career? Who's been constant to you to keep you moving forward? Okay, no, this is no, no, I'm going to, I'm going to put you up there, Simon, as well as you know, because genuinely we speak to each other very regularly. I've known you for a long time. Um, big, big inspiration to me. Patrick Cameron presentation. And I've got a couple of mates who, if ever it's a tough day, and that's Lee Stafford and a hairdresser and session stylist called Tyler Johnston. And these guys are the ones I'll pick up the phone 
and say, I'm struggling, I need help, I want to talk, and, and just really important. And when it comes to business, it's Helen Ward from uh, the Richard Ward Hair and Metro Spa. So it's kind of different areas that, that keep me focused. Um, and, and it's really important to have someone like that. You can just pick up the phone and rant or rave. I mean, you know, what you, what you literally rant or rave. I mean, I, I will just say, um, Edward, I mean, the people that you've just spoke of there, you know, bar, bar none, really, it just shows the quality that you surround yourself with anyway, because, you know, worked with, with Liam, worked with Helen as well on different projects. And, you know, they are great people, great uh, ambassadors for our industry as well. But before we go into, I mean, we're getting on now time-wise. I can't let you go. I mean, I'd love to talk education with you, you know, what we do. I know we've worked on different things together. But I can't let you go without bringing up the fellowship because that's a, a passion of yours as well. I know you're involved in it quite heavily as well. We're going to get Barry Stevens on, which is the current president. He's uh, hopefully going to be on in the next, you know, not too distant future. But from a fellowship point of view, um, what's that done for your business? Or what's the fellowship mean to you? For me, it's about networking with the right people. Um, and that's not, not, I'm not saying exclusive. I'm saying the right people because it's the right minded people. It's a group of people who want to better themselves, whether it's through business, through creativity. It's a group of like-minded people. Again, you can brainstorm with, you know, I, 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 I've learned so much just from five minutes with people throughout my career. And the opportunity to be in one room with all of these people is so important. And it gets you out of, it gets you out of your sort of every day. So for me, it's just been a really important way of mixing and meeting, getting to know people from, from different areas, different walks, different sides of the industry, from manufacturer, to hairdresser, to barber, big business, small business. Uh, that, that's what it's all about. All right, cool. Okay. Right, Sam, are we going to head in? Running out yes, we time? will. Edward, I'm going to finish off some quick fire questions. I will speak to you over the weekend. Send my love to your mum and dad, Auntie Michelle and the kids and everybody. Hope oh, everybody's safe and well. And uh, we'll catch up over the weekend after this. Here we go. Thanks, you all fellas. set. Ready. What's your favourite drink, Edward? Uh, red wine. Mm, red wine. Nice. Got a classic as well tonight. We're not messing about here. This is London. <laughs> no, you're not coming up now. <laughs> Favourite destination? But anywhere, the end of my bloody road at the moment. Don't get me started. <laughs> but where would you, where would your ideal, you Michelle kids, where, what's the, or work, where's the favourite place you love to go? Do you know something? We have a special place in Lanzarote, nothing exotic. It's where the kids, we've taken them every year. They've grown up together there and it's our special happy place. I like Lanzarote as well, Costa Teguise. It's quite nice, quite quiet there. It's nice there for a, a chill out. We know, no, a bit windy, but nice. Uh, Favourite music? Rap. Rap. Hey, everybody, take a look at me. I've got street credibility. Here we go. Uh, what's your favourite food? Uh, that's a great question. I, I'm Chinese food. Love Chinese food. Good Chinese food. Okay. Uh, I'm going to throw another one. If there was a karaoke bar as well, what's your favourite karaoke song? What's your go-to? Do you know, so I'm absolutely, completely tone deaf. But there's a song that gets me going. If, if, if ever I'm in a bad way, ja um, Jackie Wilson, um, your love is lifting me higher. And that song, if it's not that, it would have to be Elvis Presley, Burning Love. Um good stuff a lot of information I'm going to make because I've got to put all this together in a minute slow, slow down and the Peroni and the Malbec is just starting to kill, kick in as well if we were not doing all this who is your ideal dinner date now don't be a fanny on this one you've got to be strong on this one but who would be your ideal dinner date who would you love to have dinner with God that's a hard question um, a hard question because my wife who I'm terrified of is in the next room I'm going to get clowned for that aren't I um, who's my ideal dinner? That's a great question. I, you know something, it would be, in one respect, it would be Maggie Thatcher from 40 years ago. I want to sit down with her. She's oh, quite popular on this question. Be. She's quite popular. Yeah. Weird. Yeah. You, um, other than that, it's got to be one of those incredible film stars over the years, hasn't it? It's got to be... Let's pick whether one it's, then. Um, 
it's got to be a Sharon Stone. It's got to be, you know, the, the, the obvious. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to put Sharon Stone down. So that's Edward blocked all weekend at home. So here we have Edward uh, Emmings, director of Alan D. Great company, great guy. Edward's having his favourite red wine. He loves a red wine. He's drinking the Classico tonight. He's sitting in his favourite bar restaurant in Lanzarote where he loves to go and chill out. That's his place for his wife and his kids. He loves it. He's listening to a nice little bit of rap music, which is his favourite music he uh, likes to listen to. He's waiting because he's put his ticket in for karaoke, which is uh, he's going to sing Your Lit Love is Lifting Us Higher. He's having his favourite food, which is Chinese. And he's doing all this for the beautiful Sharon Stone and his wife waiting outside to egg him as he comes out. Edward Emmings, you've been a fantastic guest on Barber's Arms. Keep watching, keep the faith, and uh, stay safe, my man. Thank you so much. Stay safe, guys. Edward, it's been a pleasure, sir. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Hopefully for a pint somewhere. Wow, Gaz. That had just flown, hasn't it? Oh, we're struggling getting it in now, aren't we? are going to have to extend the show at this rate. You know, just talking about uh, Elvis there, and it's not a joke, this, there's been a lot of scams about with, I think people who are in lockdown, uh, there's... <laughs> the burgling industry has gone zero because everybody's at home. So there's a lot of fraud out there. And I got a message off my bank the other day, and I'm sure a lot of people have been having this. Um, it wasn't my bank. It was off a bank, HSBC, which I don't bank with them. I bank with Nat West. And uh, so it was a bit strange, but it said, you've won £250 worth of Amazon vouchers, or <laughs> you've won a ticket, two tickets to watch the best Elvis tribute uh, act at when it comes out of lockdown and I like reading it and then I read it a bit further and it said press one for the money two for the show I'm not even laughing please I get me a little go go don't you cocktail time baby it's cocktail time so I'm gonna follow that perfect so tonight is gonna be a special because we've even bought a special guest in to actually drink this with me later on. So, Mr. Ross Miller, who's extraordinary, he's a great friend of ours, great friend of the show. He's the better half of uh, Miss Jackie Julian as well. So he's, he's, he's an absolute star. But before we go any further, what we're gonna do is get a great drink on the go. So it's, we've got a Scottish homage to Burns Night, which is always on the 25th of January, but I think most Scots like to keep it to a weekend, so it's going to probably hit its peak tomorrow night. I think most Scots are, are, are be celebrating this tomorrow night. I know they won't be having the perfect uh, Burns Night as they usually do, but we're going to try and make them as best as we can. Uh, Barmaid has just got off, off duty. I think she's asleep, so I'll just come get my... Lovely chilled glass out of the freezer. We're using a coupe glass. So it's always, always a coupe glass for this kind of cocktail. So you can see the steam coming off. It's iced in the fridge, in the freezer, should I say, for the last two, two or three hours. We don't just throw the show together, you know. So we've got Mr. Rick Roberts and everybody else that's watching us tonight. They hope you're going to make this at home. So a liberal amount of ice in there. We're not going to shake this up. This is not a shaken drink. This is a stirred drink. So what we're going to do, and I'm going to make it double measures. So unless you're making one for your partner, you need to half these. This is a Bobby Burns cocktail. It's the actual Embry's. There's, a, there's about four or five different types, but we're doing the Embry's one tonight. So what we're going to do, I'm using a lovely... Dalmore, can you see that? Whiskey, my son bought me this for Christmas. Anything I make, you know, everybody always says, oh, you're making a cocktail. You know, use the cheapest ingredients you can find. I don't agree. I think you do use the best ingredients you can find. I love to sip a whiskey like that. We're only using two measures anyway, so it's not, it isn't as if we're breaking the bank, but I like to use the best that you can find. So if you're making it what by just for one, we need two shots of a good quality whiskey. So I'm just, I'm doubling this, so we've got four. So two shots of, of whiskey or 60 ml. Then we've got 
some sweet vermouth. Now, you can, I can say some names, but I like a, a sweet vermouth. Uh, you know, you can use Cinzaglio, Rossi, whatever you want, different brands. I like a, a, a better quality one, but use whatever you can get your hands on. So we're using double amount. So one shot usually, or 30 mil, double into there. Then we're using what I'm going to say is Drambuie. Now you can use Benedictine or Drambuie. This particular um, cocktail is the Drambuie side of things. So we've got seven and a half mil, so a quarter of a shot. So we doubled that, a bit extra, won't it, really? And then we've got some bitters. Now, there's all different types of bitters out there. You can use orange bitters. You can, there's all different types. Now, this one is going to, we're going to use is any Creole bitter. So we only have a couple of drops. Uh, the one I'm using is that is Peixo. So just use the, the bitters. One, two, one for good luck. And that just makes the difference, if you like. And then we just stir it. So all as we're doing... All as we need to do with a drink like this, especially when it's stirred and not shaken. You know, you might have heard that before off a certain uh, gentleman. We use a sieve, so we don't want, and this is why we use a coupe glass, because these used to be used for champagne years ago, but that's going to use a flute now, don't we? That's gone out of fashion a little bit. But anything that we strain, anything that's not on the rocks, or we always use a coupe glass. So we're going to... Now I've got to leave half of this for the for the barmaid, so I'll, I've only got to take half of it. Okay, so Rachel's going to come down and she's going to have that other half. So there we have it, and then you can actually we've got zest of a lemon, and in the recipe we're supposed to on the side have a piece of our traditional. I'll get a full piece. I think Millie's been at that one shortbread that goes on the side so you're supposed to take a piece of shortbread and keep it on the side but we're not i'm i'm, I'm forsaking the shortbread because i'm trying to watch, watch me figure so gentlemen and ladies out there there we have it we have a bobby burns cocktail the embry type so we use grand instead of uh, instead of benedictine so you have she'll have it in bobby. one I hope you're all enjoying Gaz's cocktails as well. Um, I, I'm Gaz, honestly, every week, and you've done 38 different cocktails. You've not repeated one cocktail. I'm just getting, Rachel's going to hate this because she, she doesn't like whiskey, but it is absolutely lovely. So I'm just passing that one over to the bar. You can see it there, that's double one. I haven't drank it all myself. That's the bar maze there. So, Burns Night. We've got uh, Mr. Robert Burns, who I, I pro he probably wasn't drinking this. <laughs> oh, that's all with that face. I told you. I want, like, Gary, I want to ask the that. guests as well. I'm wondering what to get you for your birthday. And uh, I've thought about it now. There's a friend of mine and, and yours as well. And we're hoping to get him on a guest soon in Canada called Mark Painton. And Mark is a big cocktail drinker. And he's got a little tattoo there, which is a little martini glass with a pink cocktail in it as a tattoo. I just want to ask our viewers, should I get Gaz a, a, a tattoo for his birthday? So uh, we'll do it on a, on a poll, really. Um, you just send your yes or no. Should Gaz have a, co a cocktail glass tattooed just behind his left ear? Um, that would be really cool. So let us know whether I should pursue that and get him some vouchers to uh, get a tattoo done. Well, you know, you, you know that's not going to happen anyway. So why? It's, we've got to do what you've got to do. What the viewers want. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. And we'll see if, if we get enough if we get enough people to say it, we'll do it. But it'll have to be a lot. There you go. It's in your hands, viewers. Not only tonight, but all the thousands that join us throughout the week and watch it. Please send a comment in and message into the uh, Barber's Arms whether you want Gaz to have a little cocktail tattoo just behind his ear like our friend in Canada, Mr. Painton. Great guest, Edward. Uh, you can tell he's a presenter. You can tell he's used to talking and interviewing. He, uh, I thought it was really good on the uh, Rant to Rave. First time we've done that. 
Uh, but to do a rant of her aliens for two minutes and he didn't stum at once, he fantastic. Hey, and do you know what? I, I, and I can't believe it. I've got it down in my notes here and it went so quick and I couldn't, I couldn't get it. To- couldn't get it in, but I heard he was a bit of a banker in his in his early years. Well, it it is there's there's quite a lot of uh, strings to his bow. To be fair, um, he, he also uh, does um, he, he deals in in really nice watches as well. So being a bit of a watch junkie myself, uh, we do speak quite a lot about different watches that he buys and sells, um, and these are all top end Rolex tags and. You know, really nice watches, Cartiers, and he's a connoisseur and he knows all the models, he knows when they were made, he knows the prices. A bit like a watch finder, but he does it uh, himself. So he's got lots of little talents outside of Edristin and Barbering that he gets involved in. But a great guy, great guest tonight on Barber's Arms. I'm glad we got him on. I hope you guys enjoyed that as well, who's watching at home as well. Yeah, yeah. He's got uh, very, very much a dark horse. He's got, he's got some great skills. So... I know we've got our uh, local hero coming on, and I know you. Do you know this young man? It's Nick Charlie. Do you know? Do you yeah, know I think I've crossed his path a few times. He's down in Ipswich, isn't he? Yeah. So it's funny that we just we just had uh, Edward on, and he's got an academy in, in Ipswich, and then we've got Nick on as well. Nick, how are you? Welcome to the Barber's Arms. Can you hear us? I think he's watching as well. We're well, we're on. Nick, how you doing? <laughs> Very you're well. Right. Welcome to the barbers. You look like you're in a real bar there. You're not in the side. I am. I'm waiting for him to serve me a drink. <laughs> Welcome to the barbers' arms. It's lovely to see you. I know we're in di- different times, and we'd usually be doing this in the salon or the barber shop, and you'd be showing us round and everything, but. Uh, Nick, you're, you're Adam and Eve Barbers in Ipswich. Yeah, yeah. And I know it looks like you've had a lot down hair. I've, I've always seen you with a lot longer hair. What's happening? No, I had it cut off just recently. <laughs> no, um, the past year I've had it short. I, oh, have you? I think because I've got the receding hairline here now, you see, time's getting on oh. with me. So I've had to sort of got rid of the uh, brush back work and I've sort of gone short, bring it tough just to hide my hairline. Well, there's only 100,000 viewers now out there that know your secret now, so you, you, you've blown that, haven't you? So. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Nick. Yeah, thanks for having me on. And I just want to start by saying massive respect to you two for, you know, doing this every week and all that, keeping everybody informed with all the news and everything like that. So it, it's really very much appreciated by everybody. Yeah, oh, thanks, mate. Mm. Well, it's great to have you back on the show. Uh, I know I've, we've done a little bit of work. I know you've been involved with the BBA before and, you know, okay, you've, you've entered competitions and we, we've, our paths have crossed. Um, yeah. How's it affecting you? I know, I know I hate bringing this up, but I've just been called the, the guy in the blue, in the blue, the doomonger from, from, uh, from Edward as well. So I feel terrible now bringing everybody's uh, life down, but we got to ask these questions. How, how's the actual lockdown? How's how's business with you at the moment? How's it affecting you? It's it's been okay. To be honest, it's it's just nice having the break. It's made me take a step back and just appreciate everything I've got, the family life. Um, it's given me a chance to refurbish the salon, um, have a look at the business as well. You know, you know, look at is it a business a properly properly sort of break it down and have a look at it. So. It's been a really, I've just taken positives. I've been keeping really, really busy as well. Sort of um, decorating, DIY, homeschooling, everything. So it's just made me just really appreciate everything. And just sort of had to think, not like it's just about business and work all the time. And just, you know, you could just, because at times I felt I was spinning plates, you know, concentrating on so many different things. And then you sort of concentrate too much and something, you know, Goes, you know, goes wrong, but still, I just really appreciate everything, just appreciate life in general. Nick, one of the things I've said, and me and Gaz, when we've done our daily vlogs and things like that, uh, through first lockdown was a bit new to us all. Second lockdown, it was that month, that 28 days period. I think we really stand to tell, but I've said it in, in the beginning of this. You just said it there, and I'm, I'm going to ask you to share with some of our viewers. You said about rejigging your business, having a real look at your business. One of the things mm. I've said to Barbers is, this is a perfect opportunity for you to look at 
all aspects of your business. What works for you, what's not worked for you, what's not worked for you, but you never had time to change it, you've just carried on with it. What retail you sell, is it worth it? Is it profitable? You know, are the staff trained up? You can have a real good look at your business. So what's the, some of the things that you've done that you could say that your business is going to improve from the lockdown, what you've upskilled in? What's a couple of things there that you could pass on to the other barbers that's watching? Um, we've got, I've just signed up for next month for my guys. Uh, we're all going to do a mental health first aid course. And it's a free one. It's done by a group called um, the 12th Man Org. And um, they are, they gear, they, they do, um, it's all free, it's all government funded, but they're doing um, like these free mental health first aid courses. And it's all geared up for men. It's for, for like, tattoo artists, bar, bar staff, barbers. And it's a couple of lads at the other shop in Felix, though, they've done it. And they've said really, really good things about it. So they put us forward to do it. So I said, you know, got to get something to do in lockdown. So we're doing this uh, mental health first aid course. So that's something which will be good because it's massive. Everybody's been affected by this. And, um, you know, I think it's something that all my guys will be like all trained up in and, and just to spot the signs and just help people talk about things. You know, you know, when you say things like that, you know, I, I, you know, staff training, uh, mm. things for, you know, helping people and, and, giving purpose, if you like, to your staff as well. It's, you know, it's keeping them ticking over mm. as well, isn't it? How, how many staff have you got at the moment? Um, how many? We, we, well, there's three salons, but uh, it was started by my father about 40 years ago, but he's retired now. But I've taken over one of the salons and um, I've got uh, myself and three other guys working there. And I've got so, one part-timer that comes in every now and then as well. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, you know, when, when you've got a team to support it isn't just looking after yourself in times like this either no. is it you know you've got to you feel responsible for you for your staff but it's it's keeping them engaged you know doing zoom calls or whatever it is yeah, I'm, I'm always on the phone soon so yeah. i was just gonna say that fed up me. <laughs> i know gary has zoom calls with his team i had a zoom call with some parts of my team the other day because we were on a project so i didn't want to get all 20 of them involved there were just probably about six or seven got involved but just to give some barbers some tips there who have got similar kind of shops where they've got three or four staff, um, just give people an heads up of some of the stuff you've done with your staff uh, to interact with them and to keep them like ticking over and to keep the faith there. What, what, what would you pass on to everybody? I'd say just, just check in on them regularly. It depend, you know, I've, I've grown up with a lot of the guys I work with and um, just, they say they part, I treat them like family. You know, like I said, one of the, one of my lads, he's, um, he's just had his first first kid you know, about a week ago. And, you know, like literally today, we sort of, I sent him an e-voucher, you know, just to sort of congratulate him and everything like that. You know, I said he's, you know, he's crazy for having a baby he's so young, but, you know, but still with that, that's a great thing. Because I was on the phone to him, you know, exchanging, you know, it was just saying stuff like, you know, you know the complications and everything. I said, no, that's fine. You know, it's not that normal. Just get ready, you know, just enjoy it, you know. I think it has. He's been very fortunate to, to have it in lockdown because he's got all this time with him, now, yeah. so, which is brilliant because you wouldn't get that. I, I remember when my kids were born, you know, literally you have, a, you have a couple of weeks and that's it. But now he's going to have like a month or so just to enjoy the early days, you know. Hey, don't, don't say that in front of my lady. I had a day <laughs> off, I did. That, that was it. I, she would, she'd kill me if, you, if she said you, he is you've had two weeks off when you work for yourself. I think I, think I had a day. I think, we, I think Shirley... And then it was uh, back to work on the Tuesday or something like that. So don't let the land, you know. I was lucky because my dad, my dad was um, in charge back then when I had my kids. So it was like, you oh. know, he said, yeah, go. I didn't have to, I didn't have the shop to run. So, but now it would have been totally different. I'd have probably been in the afternoon. <laughs> I, I think it's, I think it's good that you brought that up about, you know, mm. being a team, looking after how, how uh, you know, how how you look out for each other. I think. Mm. Especially when you've got younger staff, you've got a lot to offer as for information and, you know, give them hopefully, you know, some, some grounded, you know, info that they always think that they're talking to an old bloke or they're talking to, to somebody that has never gone through what they've gone through or whatever. But I think when they, when they, when they realise what you've said, I think a lot of the time it, it's, it takes a little time to sink in, but they appreciate it in the end. 
Um, just from a staff point of view, and I know you, uh, you know, you just said that about the young man who's had his baby. I mean, what a, what a time to have it. That's perfect for you as an employee. Oh yeah, massively. But, but perfect for him as well because he's yeah. he can spend quality time at home as well. But um, I think you know, especially especially the type of people we are in our trade, we are, we are a, a, a funny social type. Everything gets sorted out in the pub, doesn't it? Usually, you know. And when you take that away, you kind of a bit of a fish out of water. I know when we do our Zoom calls and you know our team meetings, there's certain people that I have to make sure I phone because they don't interact with the Zoom thing at all. Mm. You know, you've got, it's almost like teaching a class. You stimulate your students different ways, don't you? You know, yeah. and I, it's, I think that's the as well with you know when you've got one member of staff, two members of staff that I mean we've got forty, but when, when, you, when you've got certain members of staff that are quiet or they're not interacting in the Zoom call or you haven't heard of them, you literally feel responsible. You have to make sure you, you check on them, don't you, as well? Yeah. So I think that's a, a really good point that you brought up. And I commend you for doing the, the health, the mental health training. I think that's mm. fantastic. Yeah. Because even so, I don't, know about, I don't know if you get the same problem, but I've, with, the lot, with the younger staff, I've had apprentices in the past, you try and ring them, they, they never answer. Yeah. And you try texting, they, you know, and they just don't. And you think they've got their phones in their hands all the time, and they don't, they don't answer it. So just sort of, so I think I remember my um, my brother said with his son, the only way he can get hold of him is through Snapchat. <laughs> and, you know, he says, oh, I try and ring him, he never answers. Him. <laughs> so, I think that's that's you're not on your own with that. I think a lot of people have those issues, especially with you know late teens up to probably 25 26 mm. you know the, the everything's uh, social media and uh, you can get them you, you, what frustrates me sometimes is i'll look and i'll know what time they were last on whatsapp which is like yeah. a second ago i can phone them up and say well i know you've got your phone there mm. so are you giving me rods well I'm, I'm phoning you do you know what I mean? it can be frustrating uh, mm. but luckily most people are phone either answer or uh, they block me anyway uh, what are you drinking tonight nick um I go through phases with my drinking, but um, I'm on tonight. I'm on the rum and ginger. Oh, ginger! Ooh. Love that, oh, sir. Oh, but because um, I find if I drink too much beer and stuff like that, because I'll probably have a couple of these, and then what I tend to do, I get too gassy, and then I end up going and drinking the shorts. So <laughs> I know, I know, I know the feeling, Nick. And yeah. I do. Cheers. Yeah. All the very best. Good yeah, else. cool. Cheers, guys. Cheers. I'll have another little dash of Peroni while he's Ooh. necking his shots there. It's going to be a late oh, production meeting, guys. For all you who are not on, who get joining us on the production meeting afterwards, get ready because Mr. Machin is knocking them back for fun. He's got a nice, <laughs> very easy day tomorrow. So uh, God bless you tonight, Rachel. We're going to be there till three, four o'clock in the morning at least. And hopefully he'll be there. He'll be very quiet then all weekend. Mm. No, not at all. I, I, do, you, do you know what really resonated with me then? Um, got three children, 24, 21, 16. And, and Millie, who's uh, the youngest, and she, I never, ever, ever heard, she, well, she's probably never heard me swear, but she, I've never heard, heard her swear whatever, whatsoever. And if she said, if I say something or something she, she she doesn't want to swear at me or she, she doesn't want to you know give me the v's or whatever it is all she says to me is me nan that's her swear word if, if she wants to tell me get off your bike kind of thing she just turns around and says to me dad me nan <laughs> it just makes me laugh when, when she says something like that but with the 16 year old 17 year olds i think especially uh, with our apprentices, obviously they're too respectful to, to, to tell me to my face, but it's exactly true what you've just said. You know, they literally will not answer the phone. If, they, if they're 10 minutes late or 15 minutes late and you phone them, because I'm there really early, and if, they, if they're late, I'll be ringing them. If they're not there, you know, 10 minutes there early before to, to make sure they're ready to accept the client. You know, they don't answer the phone. It just drives me nuts, man. Absolutely drives me nuts. And I, you know, I'm, I'm We're getting sure... old, though, guys. 
I could kill him, honestly, though. I would. I could kill him. If, if there's something worse than, than making a client wait. Oh, no, I can't. I, I'm, I'm terrible for time and discipline. Yeah. Nick, um, just for everybody as well that's, um, you know, in a similar kind of position to you as well, is are, are you going into your shop, you know, once a week, twice a week, just to oh, like what yeah, I said yeah. earlier, that, Make sure everything good, looks good, and making sure the water's turned on and yeah. things are just ticking over. Because normally, with our local heroes, we'd have a look around your shop. We'd like to have a look in one of your drawers, um, but obviously we, we can't do that a minute. But uh, oh, no. question I've got: what, What's your favourite wall clipper? Um, senior. Senior. Yeah, I've, I've still it? got. I need to change a battery in mine actually because I've got. I've got one of the. Um, do you remember when they first came out? Yep, I, I ran. I think we had a VIP thing on a Sunday. Literally, ran straight to the stand to get it, and I had that guy engraved my name on it. So, I've still yeah. got the original one. Do you know what? I've got the video of because uh, we did a, 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 a quite a, guys. We did a really nice marketing part of this, and I'll never forget that day. It was a Saturday because Saturdays at Salon sometimes can be a bit quieter, but on the Sunday when the shutter, because we held so many, we only had 300 to launch that weekend. And on the Sunday, when the shutter doors opened at, at S8, people ran towards the stand to get queue because we limited it as well, if we if we could police it well, to it one per person. It was 50 of them, wasn't it? Yeah, and, and yeah. do you know what? Uh, I mean, we could have sold them out in first day within about mm. an hour, but... Uh, and then we had this guy. Uh, can you remember the guy that was at the back of the stand? He, he just got it engraved and stuff. So you look like a porn star. Yeah, that's him. Yeah, <laughs> um, we got him, Gary. Charlotte found him. He was working in Selfridges, and he came along and said, "Do it." And he said, "How, how many do you think you can do?" Because he did them by hand. He did them oh. by a machine. I think in in years uh, later years when we launched the G one, we had like a laser one that came and did it. But this guy did them all by hand. And literally, I don't think you were prepared for how many up to. I mean, literally, you could only do 30 a day. I've got my. Well, well, you can't really see him that well, can you? What does he well, say on it? There's my name. It's got What's my name. name? Oh, I can't, I can't really see that properly. Simon, Simon, that exact show. Can can you can you remember when when he was doing this and and where I, I don't know. I might, I might have seen Nick at the same time. But I had a pair at the same time. Can you remember what you what you wanted it what you wanted him put on mine? Remind me. Well, I'm not saying it on air. I tell you, and and your PA at the time, she said to me, she said, Simon, if you put that on, I'm not. He's not having a pair. And you said, No, no, no. He's got to have that put on his pair of clothes. And in the end, you succumbed and you put the king on mine. <laughs> But listen, this guys, and I want to share this with everybody, and I won't even put them up for for charity unless it's a really, really good charity. I have got when Charlotte found the guy who was going to engrave them, uh, we got the first ever sample in for me to test the scene here before we launched it, and she took it to the guy in Selfridges to engrave it, and I've got the scene here that says Simon Shaw zero zero one. The first ever cordless senior in the country, and I, I, I still use it. You know, uh, I mean, it only means something to me, but it's with the first ever senior that we're facing to the country. That was a cordless version, so uh, it's one of my prized possessions. That, uh, and like really? Nick said, there, he's still got that. You probably never them. change that. You'll change the blade. Them. No, you'll change the battery, but you'll never change the, mm. the, the actual clipper itself. Mm. That triggers mm. broom. Yeah, well, Nick, it's been an absolute pleasure, sir. We could we could speak all night. We're in that mood tonight where we're going to run over like you wouldn't believe. And uh, we, we've all been great guests. Thank you for coming on the show. It's been an yeah, absolute thanks pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having I, me, man. That's brilliant. I hope well, man, to... Nick, really good to have you on, bro. Cheers, man. We, we hope to see you to show soon. In the yeah, we're, back, we're back to normal. Yeah and, yeah, and we'll have a pint, mate. And thanks for coming on anyway. It's been an absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Cheers, Cheers guys. Nick. God Keep bless you, mate. Thank you. This has been one of the nights in pub, you know, when you've had, like, really good people come in and you don't want it to end. 
Have you ever been there? You know when you're having a beer with people and it's like every week you go into your local, you've got your mates and stuff, but then there's different, it gets busy. There's different people that come and have a couple of beers with you and then they move on and stuff like that to the next pub or whatever. But it's been one of them nights tonight where I've just, I mean, I cannot believe it's like quarter past nine. It seems I'm two sure. minutes since we did the intro. Do you know? Do you know what though? Do you know the funniest nights in the pub I find on a Friday because I always go to the pub. Well, I go to the pub most nights, but Fridays especially. You think to yourself, "I'm going to go in the pub early, straight from work. I'll have a couple, then I'll go home because I'm working in the morning, and then you'll have a couple. Somebody will go, and you're right. I'll, I'll, I'll drink this and I'll go now. Then somebody else comes in who you knows." And then, and then, and then you drop another pint with them, and then right, I'm definitely going now. Somebody else comes. I have to leave my car. I have to get a taxi home. It's three o'clock in the morning, and absolutely slaughtered. Gas. Do you ever do this though? Do you look at the clock? Like now, I'm looking at quarter past nine. Let's just say we're out, and I'm really enjoying it. I look at quarter past nine. Thought I said I'm going to be in at half eight. It's quarter past nine. Right. I'm going to leave here at half past nine, so I've got time for another one. So the 15 minutes go, you have that pint, and then you think, right, latest, it's going to be quarter to 10. And then it got so same thing. But I look at the clock and think, right, 15 more minutes, one more drink, carry on the conversation, and then get away. And then you have that fatal mistake saying, come get a taxi. So then you oh, look no. at it and you're there till 12, you think, oh, fuck it, I'm fucked. Do you know what? Do you know what? He eats a pint. I have a pint and drive. So I have a pint. And if I have more than one pint, I call in for a quicken and I go. I was captured years and years ago. I was captured when I was a very young lad. So I, that's what I do now. But then once after that one pint, that's it. I have to go. I have to drive. I, I have to go off. But I will, I will just admit, if we ever, ever go out and you have been out with him, Mr. Trevor Stud is the worst. If we can get him over that three pint threshold, he will never go back, will he? He's, well, he's look like... at the night we had in Dubai. We went to uh, Pier 7, if you remember. We went to Simon Rimmer's restaurant, Pier 7 in Dubai, on the Dubai Marina. And, uh, well, it seems like a different lifestyle. I'll, I'll just quickly before Ross comes on as well, um, I've spoken to somebody that's just come back from Dubai and just said, you know, it's just a different planet at a minute. Everything's different out there compared to what we are here. It's just, uh, but don't worry, we'll have faith. We'll get back to it at some point, guys. But me and Gaz were in uh, Dubai on one of our trips and we, uh, Trevor took us out for a nice meal and we went to Pier 7, which is Simon Rimmer, the Sunday brunch uh, chef from Liverpool's restaurant. And uh, I'll never forget, we went, you go up this lift because you're on the seventh or eighth floor beautiful landscape of Dubai that goes all the way around and we get greeted by what I can imagine is they were the smallest people I've ever met. They weren't, they weren't midgets or dwarfs. Well, they were like just small, small people that were like literally came up to mine and Gaza's waist, really slim with like shirt and tie on. <laughs> I, I got out there. I'm like, Gary, <laughs> Gary. And, he, and he's pulling on my shirt. Got tables over here. Like, Gaz, Gaz, something's weird happening. Uh, but Gaz got arrested after that because he wanted to take him home. So we put him back at a car, like on hangover, because he wanted to take him back in his suitcase. That's the night, if you remember, that I was <laughs> I was staying on, and you were going back the next day. And we went to a bar. I think we stayed up till about two, or three o'clock in the morning. I did the right thing as I always do. Listen, I I've got three or four days off now. I had an hangover for two days. I can remember being on Kiki Beach just cursing you. But I think you messaged me about five, six o'clock in the morning. You'd not gone to bed. You'd stayed up and you'd gone straight to the airport. What was that plane journey like on the way back? Hey, it wasn't the plane journey. I'd left all my stuff in the hotel. They had posted it to me. <laughs> magic, magic. So what's coming up next, guys? Uh, we've got the most iconic Scottishman that I know. Um, he's not the most famous, I don't think. I think Robbie Burns are probably just about pull it. But we have got Mr. Ross Miller, all the way from Falkirk, Renella Hair Studio. 
Academy and Barbering Academy, and he's in the house. Hello. How I'm are the- you, mate? It's like the boys are back in town. Oh. Ross, Ross, I love my wine. I'm drinking oh. it tonight. You're welcome. You're welcome. Not just one bottle, but tres. Okay. So, yeah, you can't buy just one bowl. You've got to buy three. You've got to buy three. Thank you, mate. Look at the legs on that. I don't yeah. mean gals. Look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. Sweet. Right. Can, can we can can we actually get one thing out of the way before we start? Because I, I know we're definitely getting run over. I, I knew, knew you were going to come out. I knew you were going to come out. Come on, let's do it. Right. How do you say? So it's it's Slangevar. Is that right? Slangevar. 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 Slange. Slangevar. 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 What are you drinking, Ross? Mm. Well, there's a good point because we've got Gary's cocktail. Hey. Oh, nice. That's lovely, isn't it? Well, I have to say, Gary, that I agree with you that it's got to be something special. So something like an 18-year-old. Oh, do you know what? We'd, we'd never, ever drunk enough scotch together knowing that you're a Scotsman. Well, I beg to differ. I'm not a big, I'm not a big uh, whiskey fan, actually. I'm not a massive whiskey fan, even though being Scottish. The, the only thing I would say is that what I found was that I went on a, a um, I went on a stag night. In fact, it was Colin from Medusa. You know my mate Colin. Yeah. His and and um, his mate actually sells whiskies. That's what he does. So he, so we had a, a whiskey tasting session at the stag do, and there was four bottles of whiskey. One was something like you know thirteen quid, whatever you know, gross. You know, nice ones, but right the way up. Um, and I didn't like three of them, but I loved one. And it was the one at 200 quid a bottle. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it's just, I think there's just a taste that you've got for it, you know? But, uh, uh, well, I think that Jackie will say, you know, you won't be drinking that on no, a regular basis. No. But... <laughs> he, 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 though, was I brought this with me as well. Oh, this is amazing, this. I've seen this. Yeah. So I brought that. And I've got my little, I've got my little shot glasses that kind of go with the these skull ones that go with. Oh, perfect. That was let's have a table. toast. Let's have a let's have a let's have a tequila toast, shall we? Excellent. I, I, I've got I've got a I've got a whiskey toast. Can I can I do whiskey instead of tequila? Yeah, we'll let you off this time. Because <laughs> it is Burns night. It's all Burns night, this is, you know. Yeah, yeah. Well, slange. Slange. Do you know, have you ever found that when you take your first, te- ow, the first tequila of the night, does it sting your lips? <laughs> I thought you, I thought you were going to say it stings your ring. <laughs> well, it probably does if you dab that. it on. The first one tomorrow night. Love the pork pie out, by the way. You look like an extra off snatch. It's um, just to stop the shine. Is that all? Sort of, well, well makeup department's done well. There's no glow on there. Um, <laughs> yeah. But Ross, uh, you, just tell everybody as well, you've just been nominated for an award as well. Yeah, um, well, yeah, part of the Shabba. Uh, as you know, Simon, fantastic uh, award ceremony with Joanne Reed. Amazing, uh, Shabba. It's a great night. And Gary, you're definitely coming this time. If, if it's going on, of course, we don't know what's happening. But um, yeah, I was awarded, uh, put forward for the finalist of the male playlist. Male stylist, so... Well, as you know, well, as you know, Ross, you've been there. Guys, I compare them awards, which is a great honour and privilege to do that. But I've got to say that's the easiest, easiest night of my career that I have, which is to compare the Scottish Hair and Beauty Awards at Shabba because the audience is is perfect. And I had this little routine last year before we started and we do it with Josie Smith, who's a, a big radio personality up there in Scotland. And Josie does her bit, but she's really professional and calculated and reads off the video printers and everything she's she's superb and i just went up so before we start we're just going to get the audience warmed up before we start the awards and we just did a a, a little sweet caroline i swear down it's the best we've ever done ross yeah. how Bro. good was that oh you were i mean i think they i think the staff decided to give up pulling people off the chairs because everyone got up in the chairs and was just arms in the air it was brilliant absolutely brilliant such uh, a great night. Do you, do you know what though? I bet I bet 
Scots aren't the hardest crowd when they're full of, full of ale to sing with you, though, Simon, are they? Well, it was quite, it's before the award started, but the, the biggest mistake, and when I sit down with Joe and we talk about this year, if, if hopefully, keep us fingers crossed, we can do something, is let's not have an interval. Because I went outside uh, for a bit of fresh air in an interval and I took my earpiece out and I got my headset off and just went outside for a bit of fresh air. It was carnage. And I mean carnage. It was around about 10.30 at night um, and I looked and I thought, wow, this these next four awards are going to be tough because the audience has gone. The the Hilton Hotel, Errol said this, but the Hilton Hotel run out of champagne early doors. Yeah. Oh, yeah. They never stuck enough. Never stuck enough. It, it was unbelievable. Whoever's their, their, you know, whoever's their quantity buyer and surveyor buyer I, 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 underestimated it. I had a phone call with Joanne not long ago and I said, sir, you know, we were talking about it. And I said, you know, Joanne, you, you know, you can sell this thing four times over. You know, it's absolutely, every, I mean, there's always a massive waiting list for it. But I said, maybe, maybe if, it, if, you know, there's a distancing thing and all this kind of comes on, have it over two nights. Have maybe here one night, beauty the next. Um, you know, because there is a lot of awards, there's loads to get through. But, I mean, whether you separate them or not, everyone has a great night. It's a fantastic event. It's amazing. The, 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 so thing the, best. Is, the thing is, Ross, it's not a secret, is it? They know it's coming. They know it's happening. I mean, they know it's coming every... <laughs> it, just, just quickly, I, I mean, I know um, a lot of uh, our guests or our viewers uh, know the show very well, and we always talk about you, but... Can you just give us a quick? I know, I know, you know. Just give us a quick bio of you and who you are, what you are, because you're such a great guest. I don't want anybody to to miss out on what you are and who you are. Thanks, mate. Um, yeah. So, Ross, I I, I come from Scotland, um, central Scotland, a place called Falkirk. Um, working a hair salon called Renella, which was a family business, still is. Um, I've now got a partner, Laura, a, a business partner, Laura, uh, who works with me. But the salon's been there since 1969, so it's still going. Um, I've also got the academy, uh, which is Medusa Training Academy, um, and you know that's grown and, and becoming great. You know, and and really, it's just about us trying to help as many people as possible get into the hairdressing uh, sector, uh, look at it for what it really is. It's an amazing place. Um, and, you know, my whole goal just now is just to try and support as many people as I possibly can, whether it be salons, individuals, um, or my own salon, you know, in its own right, obviously, with its own people that are in there. Um, and, you know, I've been in the industry for now, uh, this is me 30 years now this year. So, um, yeah, 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 it's sore. But, you know, I, I've been around. The thing is, I mean, I've been, I've been going to salon, for example, since I was about... Um, I think my first one was about 16, I think, with my mum. Uh, if, if anyone doesn't know, my mum obviously was a hairdresser. That was where it's all come from. Um, so, you know, I've, I've met so many people and I've been inspired by you guys. Um, obviously, Rick, you know, big friend. Hi, Rick, by the way, because I know you're watching. Um, hat, hat friends, as he calls us. Um, you know, guys like that, just so inspirational for me. But it's been great. Um, I've really enjoyed it. Um and uh, yeah, just going to can you, this 2021 is going to be a good year. We're going to support everyone as much as we can and get as many people into hairdressing and training as possible. Lots of education going on. Do, do you know what though? I think I think you're an inspiration for a lot of people as well. North of the border, which means nothing to me anyway, because I think we're all as one country, one nation, should I say? And you're absolutely lovely, fella. But it doesn't mean just because you're in Scotland that you don't hit the heights that you need to hit. I mean, you know, there's a lot of companies out there, but Renella has got a fantastic name, Medusa Training especially, um, you know, and all the people that we work with as well. Um, I think, you know, coming to Salon International, I mean, how long does it take you to get there, Ross? Um, well, uh, what you if you fly, you know, you've got to go to, I usually go to London City if I flew, so you're only five minutes away from obviously London City, but it's about an hour and 20 minutes. Um, if you get the train, you've got to get into London King's Cross, which is about five hours, um, and then obviously maybe about another hour across to uh, Salon itself at XL. Um, but obviously, when I was at Wembley, it was a bit of a journey, <laughs> you know, there was lots of different ways to go when you were there, crazy. 
But, you know, at the end of the day, I, I just look at it and I think if you're going to invest in yourself um, or make yourself better, these are the places to go by far. And, and uh, we yeah. have such a great weekend, the whole lot of us. It's just tremendous. It's great and, I, and I've seen you, you know, before, before I got to know you a little bit more personally as well. And I'm going to say what a great guy you are as well. It's always great to see you, hear from you. And whenever we see each other, you, you've got a real nice warm personality, which is, which is really nice. And I hope that's coming over tonight to our viewers as well. And uh, you've got a fantastic taste in Malbec and also in Patron as well, in tequila. Yeah. So, uh, but Ross, you know, um, moving forward, I know that you, you, um, you're you in Scotland, but your partner's in Doncaster. So this has been a tough time as well when lockdown's coming and other people have been in there. You've had to do the right thing. So when it's been safe to move from Scotland to England, but you've had to then, once you've got to England, you've had to lock down or sometimes you've been caught in Scotland where you've had to lock down in Scotland as well. So how have you coped? People who are in the same position, um, how have you coped with that? What's the techniques okay. you've been able to do with that? Um, yeah, I mean, you're right, obviously. I mean, you know, I've, I've got, you know, Jackie down in Doncaster, where I am just now. You know, I'm not in Scotland at this moment in time. I'm down there. I'm at home. But that is my home. That's what I call it. And um it's tough. I mean, you know, I've travelled up and down for 10 years now, pretty much. So, you know, I'm used to it. Um, nobody ever thinks when you get to a lockdown situation that you might be thinking, will I get home? Will I get to work? It, you know, it's a completely different situation. You don't know what it's like. When they shut the borders off on the 26th of December from Scotland, they never shut the borders. But there was always this little niggling thing in your mind saying, am I going to get stopped by the police? And they're going to say, where are you going? Um I, I, I mean, you know, look, I, I was down here in March when it happened anyway. We locked down. I stayed down. I came back in July when the salon opened. Um, and I was, I was up and down, obviously, over that period of time. Come November, when you guys locked down, we stayed apart. We, I never traveled um, because you were in lockdown and we weren't. So we made the decision that it wasn't right for me to travel. Um, yeah. And Jackie was right. You know, it wasn't right because... It, you know, I've got to think about my team back home and I've got to think about what it looks like as well. So we stayed away. And then obviously when it opens back up in December and we could travel again, then we did that. Um, I was coming down for Christmas anyway and we kind of knew that it was going to be Christmas and then right through now, you know. So that'll be me. I'll be here until well, then. Gary, we were all on tender ups on uh, Christmas Day because we'd all spoke on the group chat and we had a video call quick Christmas Day between us all on the production team. But... We were all waiting. I kept looking at my phone after four o'clock, five o'clock to make sure you got over the border and you got to Jackie nice and safe. There was, there was nobody on the road. Um, you know, there was there was very little cars in the road, to be fair. Um, and I, I do remember, though, passing past that bit when it says you're now in England and I just text Jackie or phoned her uh, on, you know, the hands free and just said, that's me. I've made it. Nobody stopped me. So it's obviously <laughs> OK. <laughs> got that's <here>. nice. <laughs> yeah. so so put put the taters taters on. I'm coming. I'm coming. Get the get the dinner ready. I'm coming home. He, he, oh, easy. I'm fine. Ross, while we've got you on, I know we're really short of time, but guys, I think it's really important. It'd be nice to do a quick fire question with Ross. I've just jotted some down as well. It's a bit different because I know you've watched us from day one. You're part of the team and everything. So I've tried to come up with some quick fire questions for you that's different to what we've ever done before. Okay, so you yeah. all set? Yeah. I'll go have a go, okay. no problem. We'll start off with the easiest one. What's your favourite drink? Um, I'm going to go with um, Disarano. Oh, Disarano. I love a Disarano. Oh, That's yeah. Nice. Disarano and Coke is like a Dr Pepper. It's nice. No, just a Disarano. Just, just don't mix it. Just Disarano. You, you, yeah, but you guys are hardcore. We'll speak about that afterwards. Uh, what's your favourite film of all time? Oh my God, that is a tough one because I'm a proper filmy. Um, Jesus, uh, I'm just I'm going to go and just say the Star Trek, hey, Star Trek, Star Wars saga. That's just I love it. Oh no, I thought it'd have been freedom. <laughs> Brave heart. <laughs> no. Um, what's your favourite film food? What do you like to eat while you're watching a film? Oh, I I love Italian. I mean, my family's Italian, with the name Ranella. It's my mum's side, so Italian. But, but is that something you'd eat Italian while you're watching a movie, or would it be? Oh, what's your favorite popcorn. Snack? Popcorn. popcorn. <laughs> I like to get a bit of popcorn and book it there and cut an all in the middle, and 
you can put your imagination to rest. <laughs> Popcorn. Favorite. What's your favorite destination? Where Where's the favorite place that you like to visit? Uh, I have. I loved when I went to Florence, and I would go back in a minute. I'd love it. I love Florence. I love it. I'd love there. I've been lucky enough to work there a few times. It's just just beautiful. And who's your favorite person in the world that you'd like to watch a movie with? Jackie. Ooh. That's really cool. Honestly, I'm I'm not I'm not just saying this, but you need to watch a horror film with this this woman. She is tremendous watching a horror film. We went to the <laughs> cinema once to watch the the visit, and the poor chap next to Jackie came out like that, petrified, <laughs> not at the film, but at her. <laughs> I, I I was actually to the point I had to stop I had to stop myself laughing I was giggling the whole way through it and she was even at the advert she went ah! I, I swear to God <laughs> My God. hey it. listen I tell you what I thought I, I, just before I, I do a little summary on you there Ross um, I don't know if I, you know the you you guys I think last week on our group said to watch the serpent well, we watched it we oh watched wow it. brilliant but what I like to do with that is because my partner gets really scared as well as but. When she goes downstairs, I'll we watch it in bed, and I just I get out of bed and hide, turn the lights off, and then just jump out of a room because that's fantastic. I'm never. I'm, I tell you, Gary, I said to Jackie, so I'm never going to drink a drink unless I've got my hand on it all night. I swear to God. Just... Well, trust you. I've been in some places in Thailand and, and Malaysia where, you know, we've had a few beers afterwards with some savoury characters, and uh, it really made me. Have a you know, I'm gonna do what Stu did in Hangover Three, where you put the napkin over your drink yeah. in case somebody roofies you. Ross Miller uh, from Winella. Excuse me. Nobody's ever gonna do that to you. <laughs> <laughs> he, to, to be fair, he's got a point. <laughs> unless fair hey, unless they've got a wheelbarrow. He, well, there you go. You never know. I've still got my looks. No. Oh. Uh, Ross Miller from Brunella, great for you to have us. I know you've been there from day one and have a big input to what's happening on Barber's Arms as well. But Ross is having his uh, favourite drink, which is Di Serrano. He's watching his favourite film trilogy, which is Star Wars. He's having a bit of popcorn. He's uh, he's, he's doing all this in his favourite cinema in Florence and he's doing it with his favourite friend in the world, Mrs Jackie Hullion. Ross Miller from Brunella, good luck with the Shabba Awards. We will speak to you afterwards. Great to yeah. have you on Barbara's arms. I bet it feels a bit surreal being on this side of it, but man, yeah. the top man. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Thanks for that. Cheers. Listen, just before you go, I just need to ask you a couple of things. Just, do you know when everybody says Burns Night for the Scottish is that important? Is, is it true? Burns Night for the Scottish? Yeah. Well, I mean, Burns Night across the world, Gary, is massive. In fact, I would probably almost hazard a guess that the Scottish people don't celebrate it as much as everyone else in the world does. I, I actually think that, you know, because I've, I've only been to one Burns night in my whole entire life. Mind you, that might be because I never got an invite. But, um, I mean, it's massive. I mean, in, in, in America, there's more Burns statues in parks in America than there is of their own poets or people. I, I, I know, but, you know, North America is is crazy like that because they're always wanting to belong and everything else. But so you don't do the Selke Grace and all that caper and pipe the Haggis in and oh yeah, I mean, you know we we've actually got Burns Night tomorrow night where mates on Zoom, right? And and we've got a full itinerary of the you know addressing the pipe the Haggis and addressing address the Haggis. I've got a speech. My mate's got a speech. Jackie's going to do a poem. Uh, you know we've got addressing the lassies. We've got everything going on tomorrow night, so we are going to do it. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, you know, we, we, when you're going to do it, you've got to do it. You know, you may as well. Quick question coming in, Ross, just before you leave us. Another quick question, very quick question. Who is your hero? Uh, Jackie. No, he's a hero. He, he's getting Aww. everybody some bad points this weekend. He needs to stop it. Trevor, cut him off right now. <laughs> Ross Miller from Ranella, get rid. There you go. Hey, Listen. Can, can, I, can I just say before he made me the most because you know what you know when we have the after party you know well we, no it's post production meeting that we have but we, <laughs> we get slaughtered really yeah well but you do you do but can you see this yeah he sent me this 
Uh, you know when we were talking about getting dressed up and everything? Yeah, 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 yeah. I've, I've got a kilt. I've got everything here. But this, our frost, this, this was me present of it. Honestly, it, I don't know if you can see that, but it's yeah. absolutely. But every, all, all my tackle won't fit in it. I don't know what we're supposed to put in it. I don't. Or, you know. What do you mean tackle? Like you know me, man bit. Well, don't that go in front though? I know what. what what's it for? Don't put your cock and balls in the sparring at front, do you? you is, is, that that front. What, is that what it's for then? Cover your cock and balls up with? It's to cover them up, not to put them in it. What's fucking wrong with you? All the Scottish people, get your messages in. What Gary's just said about putting his uh, private tackle in, and if you go back to episode, I think it was something like episode nineteen. Baldy from Andy said that him and Kieran were fascinated with your balls. Do you remember that? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. He did say it. And he's I fucking weird. Remember. So I know. I know he said it. Anyway, guys, what a night! I've really enjoyed tonight, mate. That's been one of the most quickest, and I could carry on with Edward. I could carry on with Nick, and I could carry on with Ross. Um, probably at some point we we might need to speak to when we get really good guests on like that. The chemistry we're really good is is. To leave them in. You know, like on the chat shows where you, you've interviewed and then they move around the chairs to get the next guest in. It might be an idea just to get people in because I didn't really want to lose any of them tonight. I, I, I enjoyed all of them being being involved with us tonight. It was good. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, all I can say is, from my point of view, uh, well, we, we know Ross very, very well. Love him to death. Absolutely gentleman. Um Best legs in a kilt I've ever seen in my life on stage. Um, yeah. you, you know, we, we've worked with him a long time, and it, especially at uh, Salon Tadashi, just, do you know what? When we, when we do the shows, it's about meeting up with our fraternity or our family and team. I know we've got, we've got a job to do when we go to these dudes, but I absolutely love the social side of what we do as well. It's absolutely fantastic. You know, and I think that's part, and I think that's why all our viewers miss what we do when we go to the shows as well, because that's why people go to the show. It, it, yeah, they do buy, and you do, you know, we sell stuff and, you know, we showcase, we, we educate. But I think at the end of the day, it's about socializing. And, and I think this year we've really missed this, haven't we? We have, and I think we're trying to do everything we can on Barber's Arms. It's great when Nick came on today, you know, True Life Barber's who were sat there. We have done a lot in terms of keeping everybody's spirits up and we keep a lot about the information that you give out from what you've heard and what you're doing with your five shops. It's not like somebody's, you know, I work for the brand wall, but you're working from a salon. So it's great that we pass on the information. Uh, just before I finish off, I had some great meetings this week with Wall, uh, guys, for when you get back to work and later in the year, we've got some new products coming out that are really interesting and really exciting. I can't wait to fetch them, not only live here on Barber's Arms, but also live at maybe our virtual exhibition that we've got coming up probably in May time. And also, hopefully by end of year, fingers crossed, everybody behaves, our NHS does well, that we can have some kind of exhibition or live shows back end of October, November something like Salon International. So there's exciting things. The brand's not stopping. We're, we're producing some really cool, free, really good products this year that's going to be coming out. So I was excited about that. I can't share them with you at the minute, but we will do. We've got some great guests coming up next week, guys, that will be announced on uh, Tuesday, Wednesday on our social medias. Simon Shaw Wall, Gary Machen, which is the British Barber, and Barber's underscore arms, or on the Barber, Barber's Arms website, which is the... Um, barbersarms.co.uk um, you'll see all the uh, advertisements coming up for us on episode 39 thank you to everybody who joined us last week I think we're at 98 90, 98,000 views 106,000 from week before 5.3 million so far over 350,000 podcasts downloaded guys it makes us so motivated when we do this to see how many people watch us all the positive views that we get and we'll keep doing this and we'll keep fetching it fresh. You know, tonight we had Rant to Rave, which is going to be a new feature of the show. Uh, we may be keeping the guests on the shows as well. So we, we interview the main guests and then just move them down the 
the chair a little bit. But um, I hope everybody's enjoyed episode 38. We're here to please. We're here to make sure that we keep things ticking over. We're in the same boat as you. You know, my highlight of my week's doing a seminar for Sheila and the guys at the Freelance Air and Beauty, um, 116 people, but I was in my salon on my own, um, just on a screen. That's the new way at the minute. Got to adapt, got to get on with it, upskill yourselves, keep yourselves positive, keep yourselves safe, and we'll see you all next week on episode 39. God bless, have a great weekend, stay safe, and be positive. God bless. Let's go. So, we're all good. Let's go for this next week. Please join us next week on The Barber Zones, episode 39. So, everybody else, Trevor, you can roll now. Let's go. Robert Burns, it wasn't the most popular, but today, this is his night. Old Lang Syne was his parting for him. But that's not for us. So see you later.